You are listening to the Atlanta Real Estate Forum radio show, all about real estate edition. Shining a light on the movers and shakers in the real estate industry. The home builders, developers, realtors, and suppliers making it all happen. And now, here are today's hosts. Good morning and welcome back to the All About Real Estate Edition. I am your host, Todd Schnick, joined by my friend and colleague, Carol Morgan. Uh, before we begin, we do want to thank New American Funding for being our 2021 show sponsor, our 10th year on the air. Wow, uh, it has been so great having New American Funding as our partner and friend uh, these last two years. Uh, what, a, what a great partnership that's been. All right, Carol, one of our good buddies in this industry, been on the show several times now. Uh, we learn a lot from him, get a good pulse on what's happening out in the world when we t- chat with him. I always enjoy these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to welcome back to the show once again, our friend Jeremy Crawford. He is president and CEO of FMLS. So welcome, Jeremy. And for our few listeners that haven't heard from you before, so I'm sure pretty much everyone knows who you are, give them a little bit of an overview of your background. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much. And it's great to join you all back again in 2021 as we kick off right at the end of Q1 this year of what's been crazy busy. And from my perspective, President CEO of First Multiple Listing Service, we are the fourth largest MLS in the nation with now over 52,000 subscribers, brokers, agents, and appraisers that use our service primarily for residential rental. But we added in commercial platforms last year, you know, on the changing landscape of real estate, supporting further needs for our brokers and agents out there. And we provide software training, technical support, and really the primary database for the greater Atlanta area and really all across Georgia and in other states as a large MLS helping buyers and sellers get in and out of Atlanta the best they can with home ownership. Outstanding. Well, we've had you on the show enough now and for a long enough period of time that it has been fun to watch uh, FMLS kind of continue to grow and evolve and continue to do amazing work uh, out there. And so, uh, 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 looking forward to continuing to to watch uh, as you guys evolve and continue to serve serve us all well. So, gosh, the first thing I want to do though is I want to look back a little bit on 2020. One of the things you do is provide an awful lot of online training. So, I'd love for you to kind of run through uh, some of the numbers and uh, kind of the things you did. I I uh, uh, we had an offline chat to uh, <laughs> some pretty intriguing creativity from some of these uh, online training participants uh, in attempting to get their credits. Uh, Give us the lowdown here. What's uh, what, do you, what? What were you seeing? Absolutely. Well, last year, as you know, with the pandemic, our on-site training was abandoned for the safety of our brokers and agents, and we launched doing virtual training live, and that is CE accredited. So we have to proctor all the attendees via webcams while they're also learning, and then at the end of the year, we launched Mind Flash, which is self-paced. And so they can now get CE accredited training in a self-paced realm. They can get on at 1 a.m., take an hour, pause, get up at 8 a.m., take two hours and get their three-hour CE accredited training. Um, And it was interesting how well the agents pivoted from on-site classes. We thought we'd get quite a bit of complaints to virtual. And the number shows amazing year. We had over 20,000 students trained. That was over a 50% increase compared to 2019. Wow. We had over 17,000 CE credits issued, which is a 36% increase over 2019. Wow. Almost all of that virtually. But at the same time, I get that question. Well, the numbers don't seem to add up here, Todd. What's going on with the (laughs) 20,000, 17,000? And, you know, as we're good partners with the Georgia Real Estate Commission, they've got some strict rules about getting CE credits. And since we have monitoring and recording going on, we saw some fun stuff last year. We saw one agent wash their poodle in the bathtub for three solid hours. Three hours? How three does the dog hours. have any hair left? Well, it was a giant poodle, Carol. Okay. So it three was a hours. big one. It took the whole bathtub. Did up the dog and- pass the class? No, we didn't give CE credits for that one to either the agent or the dog. <laughs> uh, they complained a little bit because they were on camera. Um, but just not really on class. And we had a gentleman that attached his iPad to his headboard. So we watched him sleep for three hours. Nice. 
We had an agent that did two cell phones in two different classes at the same time while driving across the state of Georgia. That's impressive. Didn't allow that one to work. And then the final one was an agent took three classes at once trying to get nine hours of CE and three hours with three devices, not thinking our proctors in each class were going to talk to each other. And we do review it after the fact because GREC obviously very strict, but we now get to say, why didn't agents learn some of our technology platforms? And we had the video to prove why they were washing well, their poodles. <laughs> sounds like some of them have technology platforms down to science, but maybe not in the right way. They know how to use them, but they're using them all at once. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Game like you said, them. Todd, creative and innovative. That's for sure. Yep. Give them credit. I'm all about efficiency, but oh my gosh. I don't overdo it. That's, that's priceless. Uh, well, I just... <laughs> I do want to declare while we're on this uh, this general subject that uh, uh, as we record this conversation, I am wearing pants. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness. Thank so goodness. Just, uh, just well, and record. Jeremy made a point of saying he wasn't wearing a tie, and I don't have a tie on either. Yeah, I, I do have a belt on and pants and shoes. Uh, yes, Likewise, Todd. That. yes. That's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. You guys are funny. Well, I know our listeners always enjoy having you on the show, Jeremy, because you tell us about the state of the market. So what is going on in 2021? When is this madness going to end? <laughs> well, it didn't end in Q1. <laughs> we had we have already surpassed $8 billion in transactions through FMLS. And that's a 32% increase over Q1 of last year. Wow. wow. Now, um, of course, Q1 last year was when the pandemic started, and it did take a little bit of a dip. But yep. Yeah, but we saw most of those January, February, March closings went through. The market was really taking more of a hit in April, May, and June when the okay. when the orders came in place. So really comparing to Q1 of last year is crazy. Yeah. Well, and I think it's gonna continue to be crazy. I mean, what are you what are you seeing second quarter? Well, I mean, right now our days on market for all listings, all price points is seven. Yeah. We have never been at seven in our history of 64 years. We've mm -hmm. never been at 11, which what is it was in February. In March, we hit seven. And I looked in 2016, which was a decently healthy marketplace. We were at 42 days on market in February 2016. And so we're at seven right now. The inventory is just a challenge out there. We're seeing a very small increase. Last month, we had a 1% increase of at new active listings. Now, our stats are going to be a little messed up as we get into Q2 because a lot of things went into the hiatus out there. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But knowing we're already 32% ahead in dollar volume compared to last year. And I took a look at the median uh, home sales price too, comparing last year's or this year in 2016. 2016, we're at 189,000 median sales price. We're at 310,000, just five years later. So wow. the increase of appreciation has been crazy. And just since last year, uh, residential detached listings, the price is up 16% compared to last year. So the appreciation's there. You know, we have amazing interest rates. Uh, obviously, one of your sponsors there powering transactions like they've never seen before. You can get a 15 year as low as 2% right now fixed. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and so there's still an opportunity for home ownership as long as you can get the agent to find the inventory out there. And we try to give the agents tools so they can farm virtually now. They can look at seller scores so they can go in and see what properties had things like a baby registry attached to them at Amazon. Right. That probably means they need to move up or maybe there's some unfortunate bad news like a notice of default or divorce filing. Divorce filing usually triggers you need to sell your home. Mm -hmm. And so we're giving those tools now to our agents so they can see in a neighborhood, which out of all the 200 homes in the neighborhood has a seller score that's high because of some of these factors that we're now getting in mining data and trying to provide wow. them some artificial intelligence where they don't have to walk the neighborhood like they used to and knock on doors. They can walk from the comfort of their home and the safety of their home and see some of those factors as opposed to the baby sign in the front yard 
we get it electronically for them now and try to help them get some more inventory because there are buyers out there all over the place. Yeah, no. Talk more about these tools that you provide. I mean, we talked about your online training, you know, the 17,000 that took it seriously. Uh, so there's the online training, but what else are you doing to help realtors and brokers uh, uh, kind of go to market? Well, we add in this year, we launched Remind Docs Plus Transaction Management. So an agent can farm a neighborhood, just like I mentioned, go to the parcel level. We now give them nationwide tax data access so they can look at properties anywhere in the nation, not just in Georgia. And then they can go in front of the homeowner, do a listing presentation, and right on the spot, they can go from conversation to an exclusive listing agreement with e-signature, to putting it in the MLS, to accepting offers, and to closing all virtually with the Remind platform. So they can market, they can CRM, they can do their research, they can get their comps, they can make offers, they can submit it all. And all these are standard statewide contracts that we provide them. And we've really augmented what we've done into that space. They need more data and they need it more automated. And with you know last year's pandemic, a lot of agents learned to use the technology. And so with the Docs Plus platform, we've had over 700,000 transactions with at least one signature in six months. And so they're using the tools and we provide CE accredited training on those exact tools that are out there. And mobile is so important and virtual open houses, we've baked all of that into these tool sets so they can do this stuff from their phone, accept offers from their phone, do everything electronically. The lockbox keys we offer are on your phone now via software. So we really try to engage them and I'm happy to say, you know, some agents are resistant to change and now they have technology leapfrogged into 2021 because of the pandemic. And now they're going, wow, why wasn't I doing this five years ago? Why was I doing paper contracts five years ago when I can do this electronically? And we just really up the game with what we provide and all of that's a member benefit. We don't charge any ancillary fees for training or for any of those products. Wow. Are you ready to own a home? but don't know where to start? Speak to a local expert at New American Funding. Get pre-qualified and start looking for your dream home. They make home buying easy and convenient with a variety of home loan options. New American Funding is devoted to helping families finance their home because they want everyone to achieve the American dream, home ownership. New American Funding's technology is what sets them apart whether connecting with your home loan professional in person, online, or through the app, they are there to answer any questions. Call today to get pre-qualified. For more information, call 678-898-3540. That's 678-898-3540. You've touched on so many powerful things. You're just the fact that technology raised the bar for, you know, for realtors, for builders, for everyone in our industry. I mean, we were probably 20 years behind and now we're, you know, maybe we're still a little bit behind in some areas, but we're certainly getting there. And then just the fact that FMLS can take all this, you know, what we'd call big data and provide it in a format that your, you know, agents and brokers can really use it to find their next customers. I love that. Well, and I'm also happy to see the state has pivoted. When I moved here from Georgia, the concept that I had to sit across the desk in person from the seller to buy the home with a closing attorney, and right. now we have e-notary services. And e-notary was around in California for many, many years and in Texas. And so it's great to see that the government stepped up and they also updated regulations and I'm hoping these things aren't temporary. They're here to stay. I think they're here to term. stay. I just, I can't imagine that we're going to go backwards. You know, and speaking of that, you've added some other really cool things. Um, talk about your commercial lease and rentals, you know, what you're doing on that side. Yeah, I mean, with inventory challenges on the buy side, agents usually try to help. They got to get the seller to sell, but then there's no inventory. So there's a rental market that's popped up. And in the commercial space, we've always offered commercial for sale properties, but we added in April of last year, we added in commercial leasing as support and full-blown rental opportunities. 
We launched a new product called Air DNA just two weeks ago. It is the coolest product for short-term rental investors. It aggregates all the data from Airbnb and, Airb and VRBO. And then you as an agent can help investors pick and choose what's on the market for sale that you want to put into short-term rental as an investor. And it gives you all the cap rates, the annual revenue possibilities, compares all the other features and other properties. And it does all that right there within AirDNA. So now our agents can help these investor buyers who are doing short-term rentals. And we know we're not getting on the plane like we used to, but right. we're definitely driving to Airbnb rentals. And so we thought, let's up our game at FMLS. And we had we had 48 new commercial leases put in last month alone. And what's interesting is that the churn on the commercial leases is more than the residential sales that we're seeing. So we thought the properties might sit, but every single one that's put in is leased in 30 days with us. And so it's amazing that we have less than 200 active commercial leases per month, but we've got 50 or more per month going in and 50 or more getting leased right now, even though people are a little concerned about commercial space and what that's gonna be like. I think you've just got a liquid aspect. And we just did also uh, join in from uh, indie spaces here in Atlanta, and they're doing the WeWork type of co-work sharing suites. And so we've extended to support that commercial lease environment where you're not leasing the building, but you're leasing an office for two days a week with some shared conference rooms. And so now we have a broker that's listing those right in FMLS and using us. And we expanded the support for that market too, because that market's going to be huge. So many people are working from home but then they have their children at home, so they need a place to get away for a day or two. And these indie spaces type of environments that are out there are really good. So we've added support in for that as well. And I think that's gonna to continue to grow. Um, and we're gonna to continue to support more and more commercial brokers and agents. But our residential agents, Carol, you know, they do all kinds of business. They do rentals, they do commercial. I mean, they're, they are property experts and they do specialize but they also have to bridge the gap for their clients between buy and sell and rent sometimes sitting in the middle. Unfortunately, the rental inventory is just like the residential inventory. We're down 50% on homes for rent compared to where we were last year in inventory. So same constraints there that we're seeing in the sales market as well. And I think it's gonna continue all year long. I'm hoping we have a new spring season. It used to be our selling season, wasn't last year. But I'm hoping that this year we see a more normal spring season. We see inventory come back and we see a healthy summer of some inventory. But with interest rates, we know are going to be probably the same all year long. It's going to be hot all year long as far as buying and selling. And if you're thinking about selling, I'd put that house on the market today. Yep. No, that's critical advice. You said a lot there. I mean, I thinking about uh, the going back to the commercial side of things. I mean, we're still working our way out of this pandemic, but we're already beginning to see how people are going to be going to work and and how that's all beginning to take shape. So, no surprise there that you guys are on top of of the commercial side of this thing. You know, something else I was looking at uh, when I was reviewing some literature from you guys was, you know, this idea of the registered status and this coming soon status. Uh, uh, intriguing things there. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so it's something that registered, we just launched. And, and what we realized is that coming soon, which is something we launched for sellers who, you know, they get to get the green shag carpet out of there. So they're not ready to show just yet because if you walk in the door and see that, you're walking out the door. So their agents help them with how to stage, but they need a week or two to do that. So we put in coming soon. So it's not active, but they can advertise it. Well, inventory is so low, they're getting so many phone calls that they're going nuts because they need to get the shag carpet out of there and they've got <laughs> hundreds of buyers waiting to get in the door. So we added in a registered status so they can list it with FMLS and only the agent and the managing broker can see the inventory so their phones are not ringing off the hook. But at the same time, they can be in compliance with our rules and get an exclusive listing agreement to make sure they're getting the right state exclusive agreement with the seller, but having what we call a future marketing commencement date. So it's really something we did to pivot to help the brokers and the agents. 
they want to stage the home properly. They want to maximize what their seller's getting, but they don't want their phones ringing off the hook until it's ready to ring off the hook. And so we added that in just three weeks ago. We've already seen over 50 listings use registered and use it properly, put it there, and then move it over to either coming soon to start to expose it or move it directly to active when they're ready to put up the sign and go out there with an open house and get all the offers they can in the 48 hours of a weekend, which is what we see quite common in the under million dollar price point. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I don't know if you saw the report that just came out that said if you list your home during the week, like the middle of the week, it'll sell faster than if you li list it on the weekend. Um, do you know, did you see that report or do you know what the why for that is? I thought that was really interesting. Um, well, with so many people working from home during the day, sometimes they're a little looky-loos on properties on their computer. And if you're like me with two kids on Saturdays, I'm at the baseball field. I'm not looking at properties right. traditionally as much as I did in the past with a family. I'm at the baseball field. So I have an opportunity oftentimes to see more properties going on and off market during the week as I'm in front of my computer versus on the weekends when you're spending, you know, some time with friends and family. And I have to guess, Carol, quite frankly, with people not spending a lot of in-person socialization time at work these days, right. they're putting more time spending towards a close-knit group of people on the weekends. So going to see 20 properties is probably not top of mind, if you will, and they're not looking at it as a focal point like they are on a Wednesday and then they look and see what might be ready for the weekend. But at the same time, if it hits the market on Wednesday, you better be ready to get in there and see it and make an offer by Sunday because chances are by Monday, you're close to seven days on market and it's gone. Right. Absolutely. Well, see, I miss all that because I'm, I'm bathing my poodle while taking three classes. <laughs> so, I never see any of that stuff. I, it's, I should probably rethink that. Uh -huh. Well, you mentioned that we're kind of just wrapped Q1. Uh, looking ahead to the balance of the year, Jeremy, any any other thoughts uh, looking ahead uh, through the rest of uh, 2021? I think the challenge for agents and brokers is just inventory. I mean, it is a time where they have to go convince sellers it's the right time to sell. And anyone that's on the fence, they've got to really work with them to get them over the fence to put the property out there because it is such a seller's market right now. And I think Q2, we're already looking here at the end of April and I'm seeing numbers jump off the chart for April, just like we saw in Q1. And I think there's a lot of people that didn't sell last year because of the pandemic. And while we offered a lot of virtual offerings to help them sell, I think some of them that didn't have to sell during the pandemic are gonna bring back that inventory during the spring and they're a little more comfortable now with allowing people to come in and out and look at that. If you think about some people potentially looking at retirement last year and potentially selling and downsizing, I think they parked some of those ideas and said, let's stay safe. Let's wait till we can get a vaccine. Now that it's widely available, they're going this year. Okay, so now let's downsize. The, the kids are off to college. We're now moving towards retirement. Now we're in a safe place to get this home listed. And now they list it now with 16% compared to what it was last year on average. So, you know, Todd, I like to say you want to sell your stock high. If you're looking to downsize right now, it's time to sell the stock. Yep. Absolutely. No yeah. I have a friend that decided to put her lake house on the market because she's like, they bought it at the height of the market back in the day and it's yep. back up to there and maybe a little plus. And she's like, we're actually going to be able to sell it and come out even and it would be crazy to not sell it now. So lots of decisions like that being made. Yeah. And I think it'll be a fun market the rest of the year and we'll have some more fun sessions here too for the yep. rest of the year. Absolutely. Well, I want to, next time I chat, I want to learn about other ways to hack your online training process <laughs> to get, get some more ideas. So, well, Jeremy, we always learn a lot when we spend some time with you and appreciate uh, having your finger on the pulse of the market and, and bringing us up to speed. So before we let you go, should anyone need to connect with you and learn more about the important work of FMLS, uh, where do they go? Jeremy at FMLS.com. I make it as easy to find me as possible. And all my contact info is always on LinkedIn. 
All right. Jeremy Crawford, president and CEO of FMLS. As always, sir, good to have you. Appreciate your support of the show and appreciate you making time. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Thank you, Todd and Carol. All You're right. Welcome. We got to go wash our wash our poodles now, you know? Yes, we do. <laughs> we got dogs to wash. All right. Well, that wraps this week's All About Real Estate Edition. On behalf of our sponsor, New American Funding, my co-host, Carol Morgan, I am Todd Schnick. That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you for tuning in and listening. And we'll look forward to seeing you again right here tomorrow. We'll see you then. Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio is made possible by Denim Marketing, the publisher of Atlanta Real Estate Forum, Atlanta's favorite source for real estate and home building news. Denim Marketing is a comfortable fit, like your favorite pair of jeans. Denim Marketing tailors marketing strategies to meet your specific needs and niche. Try them on for size. They will work to create a perfect fit for your company's marketing program. Call them at 770-383-3360 or send an email to info at denimmarketing.com. For more information on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio or to inquire about being a guest, contact info at atlantarealestateforum.com. Check out the radio show by visiting atlantarealestateforum.com or by listening to the show on your favorite podcast app. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, we'd sure appreciate a rating and review on iTunes. Thank you again for listening. And we'll see you next time on Atlanta Real Estate Forum Radio.